settle in with the breath. Learn to relate to the breath in such a way that you feel at ease. Sometimes this means simply allowing the breath to come in and out as it has been, noticing where it's already comfortable, and then protecting those little comfortable spots. Other times it means actively making the spots more comfortable. But try to do it with an attitude of being at ease, an attitude of enjoyment. This is an important part of the meditation, that you enjoy what you're doing. See the importance of what you're doing, because you are creating a, a special place for the mind to settle in, so it can be at ease in the present moment, so it can be stable in the present moment. Once it's stable and at ease in the present moment, then it can see things a lot more clearly, especially what's going on inside the mind itself. The problem is that we're so adept at creating other things that we tend to slip off all the time. We create other worlds for the mind that have nothing to do with the present moment, worlds of the past, worlds of the future, worlds that don't seem to have any particular time frame, but they're not right here, right now. Just the mind spinning its wheels, creating this little world for itself, that little world for itself. It enjoys doing this because it's so good at it, good in the sense that it's very quick at it. You can create a thought of ten years ago very easily in the flash of an eye. You can create thoughts, that, things that you would like to see, things you would like to hear, smell, taste, touch. And many times that seems so much more attractive than what you're doing right here, right now, that it's very easy to slip off. So what you need is a twofold approach. One is to remind yourself of the drawbacks of those other worlds. Where do they go? And think of all that effort that has to go into creating them. You create them and then you throw them away. Create them and throw them away. It's not that you're looking for a permanent happiness with them. That's one major misunderstanding that some people have. It. But the problem is that we're trying to create a permanent happiness out of things that don't give permanent happiness. For many of us, the question of it's being permanent or not is not the issue. You enjoy doing it. It seems worth the effort. And so you have to look at these worlds in such a way that you realize it's not really worth the effort. You keep spinning away, spinning away, spinning away. You have nothing to show for it. Sometimes you have worse than nothing to show for it. It's have actually, actually have negative consequences. Lust, greed, anger, delusion, fear can arise from these world constructs that we're so adept at making. You hop into a thought and think it's going to take you someplace you'd like to go. It's going to take you to the Rocky Mountains, it's going to take you to the Grand Canyon, and it tends, ends up taking you down to hell. Just one thought leads to the next, leads to the next, and you start obsessing over things you did in the past, or worrying about things that are going to happen in the future. All of this comes from what in the beginning seems like a very innocent process. Let's entertain the mind with a few thoughts. Or you see a thought forming and you say, let's see where this one is going to go. Curiosity kills the meditators in that way. Kills the meditation, at least. So you have to remind ourselves of the, the drawbacks of that kind of thinking. That it takes a lot of energy and has very little to show in terms of any kind of happiness that's really satisfying, really gratifying. This is why we have that chant on the, the body just now. People always complain about that chant, but it's a very useful chant to repeat to yourself, a very useful thought to repeat to yourself, because so much of our, the mind's fantasy revolves around the body. What we're going to feed it, what we're going to do, either our body or other people's bodies. You have to remind yourself of the drawbacks. Of what are the raw materials that you're working with? It's all pretty disgusting stuff. And the Buddha is not saying you hate the body. He says, just learn how to use it in a better way. Instead of fantasizing about it as being attractive or as being yours, think of it as a tool that you're going to use to get the mind to settle down in the present moment so it can see itself clearly. That's the other prong of this two-pronged approach. Just learning to get better and better and better at keeping the mind here so it's more and more becomes more and more second nature. You like settling in. You know how to settle in. You know where the comfortable spots in the body are. 
the comfortable spots in the breath. Or if there's a pain in the body, a part of the body that doesn't seem to be functioning well, you know how to focus on it and make it feel better. If you know that you have any particular disease in a particular part of the body, there's, there are ways of breathing into that part of the body that make it better. You can focus on that so that you don't have to wait to see the results of the meditation down the road. You begin to see at least something right here, right now, at, very least, at the very least a sense of ease, a sense of well-being or improved well-being in the present moment. And once you've found spots like that, then you practice getting there quicker and quicker. Make it a game. When you sit down and close your eyes, how quickly can you get the mind to a really pleasant spot inside the body? And then once it's there, how long can you keep it there? One of the problems of having a whole hour to meditate is sometimes we get very lazy in the beginning. We think, oh, I've got a whole hour. I can be a little bit lazy right now. I'll get into the meditation in a little while. And we get lackadaisical right from the start. And sometimes if you're lackadaisical right from the start, it stays lackadaisical all the way through the hour. This is why it's good to have meditation in little, little short periods as well. Sit down for five minutes and go to bring the mind down as quickly as possible and keep it here and not let it allow it to move for the whole five minutes. And then when you can do it for five minutes, then you can expand it longer, longer, longer. When you have that same sort of no nonsense attitude for the whole hour, then you find that meditation is, gives a lot more benefits. So as long as the mind is going to be creating worlds, let it create a really good world right here. And John Lee was once teaching a senior monk in Bangkok how to meditate, and this was a monk who'd studied an awful lot. And After getting the mind to settle down, he says, aren't we creating a state of becoming, which is another technical term for these worlds in the mind. I thought we were here to let go of becoming, let go of those worlds. And John Lee says, well, if you're going to let go, the first thing you have to do is learn how to do them properly. Learn how to how you make these things, because it's a state of concentration. You can observe the mind as it creates this world, what exactly is it doing. You can't let go of something unless you really know it, and you don't really know something unless you've worked with it. It's like knowing cakes. If you've never made a cake, you can tell whether the cake is delicious or not, but you can't quite tell why it's delicious or why it's not. But if you're good at making cakes, you taste a cake, you know precisely what's wrong. Too much flour, too much milk too much sugar, whatever, you know, because you've had experience making them. And it's particularly the experience in making things that you really like. Those are the things you really know. So try to create a sense of well-being, a sense of being settled here in the present that you really like. That way you get to know the process well. When you know the process that well, then you can start taking it apart. So remember, there are two approaches you have to make. One is to remind yourself when the mind goes off to creating other worlds. One, that's not what you're here for. And two, there are a lot of drawbacks. The pleasure that they seem to give is not really worth it. And these are lessons that you have to teach yourself in whatever way you find most effective. Use your ingenuity in teaching yourself these lessons. And then the second prong is to get really good at what we're doing right here, right now. Quick in settling down, solid in staying here, clear in getting a sense of what's going on. Learn how to enjoy it. Learn how to make it entertaining. That way not only do you find, that you find it easier to stay here, but once it's easier to stay here and you're doing it better and better, the payoff is that you get clearer and clearer about what the mind is doing. That's precisely why we're meditating, is to understand the movements of the mind particularly the movements where it's unskillful, creating suffering for itself that it doesn't have to. And that's most clearly seen in the mind, and that's adept at settling down and being still.